So thank you everybody for joining another episode of IntentWise Connect webinars. We're so excited that we have a special guest with us today, John Durkitz from the Master Agency. And he's gonna be presenting on three Amazon traffic hacks that you're overlooking. There's some good ones in here. So um, if you wanna share this presentation with another member of your team who wasn't able to join today, or if you're unable to stay for the entire duration, uh, we will be publishing the recording early next week onto our website. Everybody who registered will automatically receive an email with that recording. Feel free to forward it to friends and colleagues. And with that, uh, I'm going to quickly introduce IntentWise in case you don't know who we are, and then I'll turn it over to our host today, uh, John Durkett. So if you're not familiar with IntentWise, uh, we have what is called our IntentWise e-commerce cloud solutions and there are three products that we offer to brands and agencies that sell on Amazon, Critio, Walmart, Instacart. Um, the first application here is the IntentWise Ad Optimizer, which uses rules and AI to help you optimize your Amazon and Walmart advertising. Um, in the middle, we have IntentWise Analytics Cloud. It's a robust e-commerce data infrastructure that handles all of your data collection, visualization, and enrichment needs for, again, Amazon and Walmart. So you can automate all of your reporting and analytics. And then lastly is IntentWise Explore, which is our AMC solution. It's built on top of Amazon Marketing Cloud and allows you to get all of the insights and build audiences with Amazon Marketing Cloud without the need of writing SQL or getting into the weeds of the actual console itself. So if you're interested in learning more about IntentWise or any of our products, uh, feel free to visit our website or reach out to me on LinkedIn. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you for the rest of today's presentation, John. Take it away. Ryan, thank you. And uh, I got to say, you mentioned SQL there and writing SQL queries, and you just triggered some PTSD from my Amazon days when I literally had to write my own SQL queries to produce analytics for my categories. It's, it's crazy that a company that kind of brands itself as a tech company doesn't have more out-of-the-box solutions for internal analytics, but... Like the reality of the world for most Amazon employees is they have to get good at SQL and they have to get good at it fast. That's uh, it. So thank you for thank you for triggering that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and yeah, SQL is a great a great skill to learn if you have it. So if you're interested in learning SQL, I definitely wouldn't shy away from it, even though it might yeah. might cause those negative memories. It's very helpful. Yeah, I I'll tell you, I think with uh, ChatGPT and and other LLMs. Uh, you can actually lean on them to do a lot of heavy lifting these days and, and right. kind of learn by doing. So it's, it's really cool, but uh, I digress. Um, thanks Ryan for the intro today. We're going to talk about Amazon traffic hacks, uh, three of them. And I'm going to talk about kind of why we're talking about Amazon traffic hacks first, uh, followed by my, my Goldilocks offering of easy, medium and hard hacks. Um, I've structured it this way because I think, you know, notwithstanding the the phrase hacks, which which kind of a, uh, apply implies shortcuts, um, I want to make sure that I'm offering solutions and tactics for sellers at all stages in their journey. Uh, I think it's very tempting to forget where you are as a seller, as a brand, and kind of skip the line to the most advanced strategies when. Uh, in many cases, you're going to be more well served by getting the basics right uh, or taking the, the easy path first. Um, I talk a lot about being brilliant at the basics uh, on Amazon. And, and the truth is, for my brands, for, for all of the clients that I advise, that's 99% of what I do. Um, it, it's making sure that we're answering the basic questions around retail math, traffic, conversion, AOV. Um, and once we've kind of got those building blocks in place, then we are we're leaning to the, the things that give you a comparative edge that uh, take you from a 99% brand to a 100% brand uh, that, that give you kind of that 1% edge. Uh, so that that's a broader theme here. Um, again, I, I like to make sure that I'm speaking to everyone wherever they are in their journey. So we'll present easy, hard, and, and harder uh, traffic hacks here. And uh, Ryan, I think this was in the, the webinar preview, but all these totally TOS compliant, they're just simply out of the box. Uh, they're simply a little different than the typical traffic solution, which is dial up PPC. Um, so the question then becomes, why are we looking for out of the box traffic solutions? Why am I speaking to everyone about these today? 
And the, the simple answer to that is Amazon paid traffic has gotten more expensive, right? I think you guys at IntentWise know this, uh, you know, at, a, at an empirical level as well as an instinctual level. Uh, cost per clicks going up and to the right, which is not a favorable trend. Uh, I, I've presented three different snapshots here of cost per click trends over the past three years. And whether you're looking at ad type, uh, whether you're looking at kind of a, a quarterly grain or annual grain, it, it's up and to the right. And what this means is brands have to now look for other ways to get paid traffic, right? If, unless you have infinite pockets uh, and that sweet, sweet venture capital money that, that doesn't seem to run dry until the credit markets change, uh, you need to find ways to sustain your business with paid tra traffic while not giving more and more margin to Amazon, uh, which is kind of the nature of the advertising market right now with cost per clicks rising. Now, it's not just cost per clicks either. It's the kind of other twin tower of what makes advertising expensive, and that is uh, conversion, right? It, it's one thing to show your ads to customers, get them to click on it. It's to get them to check out. And what I'm showing here in this slide is conversion rate on paid traffic in 2022 and here in 2023. And those dark blue bars in 2023 are smaller than the light gray bars in 2022. So customers are clicking ads, but they're not checking out as as high of a rate. Uh, and if you do some basic retail math, conversion rate times cost per click, that essentially gets you your A costs, your advertising cost of sales. So when you wonder why your advertising cost of sales goes up, it's because of one or both of these factors. And that's what every seller is dealing with. Almost every seller. I don't like to use uh, absolute statements or categorical statements, uh, but the truth is we're navigating a time that is more expensive than ever uh, to, to run paid traffic on Amazon. So what do we do? Well, if we can't lean on paid traffic to grow our brands as much, we get creative. And the three creative ways that I want to present today uh, easy, hard, and harder are not terribly novel. In fact, the first one that I'm going to talk about is uh, an oldie but a goodie. Uh, but I think what has happened over time is that the, the excitement around it has kind of worn off or has been buried by the novelty of all the new uh, shiny gadgets and features that Amazon has given sellers. And for that reason, it's forgotten. But um, as I'll show here, it, it's, it's highly effective. So this first traffic hack, uh, like I said, it, it's kind of an oldie but a goodie. Everything is new again. Uh, that's a quote that is, I think, occasionally attributed to Winston Churchill and Mark Twain as well, but I know it from Jonathan Swift. Um, but I've kind of I've also paired this with this important concept that I think about a lot in almost everything I do, which is for non-perishable -per things, there's this concept known as the Lindy effect. Um, kind of coined by Nassim Taleb, who uh, was, was the sort of lost modern day philosopher, but author of Black Swan and a lot of other books. Uh, but the Lindy effect is this concept that the best way to predict the life expectancy of something that's non-perishable is to look back at how long it has exist, existed prior. Uh, I, I think about this a lot. I think about, about with, you know, products that have been on Amazon for a long time, product types, I think about this in the context of Amazon businesses that I'm looking to acquire. How long have they been around? And I tend to think that they've been around for a couple of decades. That's a pretty good indicator of future durability. Um, but I, I, I mention all this because this first traffic hack has been around in Seller Central since, gosh, uh, at, at least 2014. Um, if I think back to kind of the, the evolution of the platform, um, it's just buried. And it, it's just kind of forgotten about. And, and the hack is social media promo codes. Uh, you know, if you go to your, your hamburger menu on the upper left and then go down to advertising and promotions, it's this, this little section that offers BOGO promotions, percent off promotions, and social media promo codes. And what I have found, uh, particularly in the past year as I've leaned into it, is 
these have great effect for my brands. And I hypothesize that they have great effect because they're just not being used uh, significantly. So I, I've shown here on the screen kind of how you set it up and what you need to do. The key with social media promo codes, it might be a little hard to see here. So I'll, I'll kind of point everyone's attention to the lower right quadrant of the screen. Uh, there's a little checkbox when you set up social media promo codes called share this promo with Amazon influencers and associates. It's important that you check this box for this hack to work and have full effect. And I'll explain why in a second. Uh, social media promo codes, I think, historically have been used by brands to engage their own social audience. You know, set up a code that's specific to, to, to their audience or specific to an influencer and then push it out on social channels. Uh, I'm not saying don't do that. What I'm saying is broaden the audience, open it up to influencers and associates. The reason you want to influ open it up to influencers and associates, and I am an Amazon associate, by the way. So I, I've kind of seen firsthand how this hack works end to end. Uh, but within Associates Central, which is the Amazon Associates version of, of Central, there's a, a specific dashboard that shows associates all of the current and future social media promo codes that Amazon brands have created. Uh, and you can sort by category sort by discount type, but it's an easy way for any associate to identify potential deals that they want to then propagate out, share out to their followings. This is a case study of when I did it, uh, but just backing up a little, what I've found is that number one, creating these social media promo codes and, and kind of putting them uh, front and center in associate central is great, but in and of itself, it doesn't work. And there's kind of a couple ways you can juice the results. And this kind of example here from one of my brands is exactly what I'm talking about in terms of juicing the results. Because this doesn't happen just organically by creating a social media promo code and, and hoping that it gets picked up. There's a little bit of, of manipulation and engineering that you want to do. But this is prima facie evidence of how effective this can be. Uh, the, the particular fact pattern here is this is a, an ASIN family uh, with four child ASINs, uh, all of which very poor sellers for my brand. Uh, you can see kind of daily run rate of one to eight units um, across a, a four ASIN family. Not great. Uh, so kind of a sunset candidate, not one that I'm, I'm looking to carry going forward and one that I do have healthy stock on. Uh, so looking to move it, not really concerned about profitability, uh, especially in Q4 for a brand product like this. We're looking to avoid uh, what I'll call usurious Amazon storage fees that I knew were coming. So in October, I went ahead and I dialed up a social media promo code uh, on, on all four ASINs within this family. Uh, the promo code was for 50% off, so substantial discount. Uh, and, and then I went ahead and checked the box for share it with associates and influencers, but also seeded it to different Facebook deal groups that I know look for high percent off coupons for their members. And this was the result. Uh, I don't know if I included all the screenshots in this deck because I wanted to keep the deck brief. But the day after the spike on October 23rd, I went ahead and I searched in Google amzn.to and then my brand name, and I found all the Facebook deal groups that picked this up. And, you know, they picked it up on the 22nd, early 23rd, and you see the spike that happened on the 23rd uh, as their members went in and rushed the gates to kind of get this, this product uh, or this family of products. And you can really see the impact on traffic down here in this bottom row, sessions. Uh, <laughs> daily sessions, typically less than 10, which is laughable, right? It, it's why the product was uh <clears throat> kind of in the position that it was but on that day on october 23rd when this promo went live 370 visits uh all from kind of facebook deal groups and then there's a little bit of a halo after the fact because i did keep the promo on uh for a couple days after but suffice it to say this was highly impactful but it doesn't just happen automatically uh i i've kind of alluded to the the two variables that are really important here number one is uh, you need to act, offer an attractive discount. 
And my experience is that 50% plus is kind of where it gets attractive for deal groups to pick it up. Uh, what I've found with Facebook deal groups is they're not looking for 20% off coupons. So don't even bother. Um, <clears throat> they like tremendous deals. They like almost clearance deals. Uh, so I, I like this traffic hack for sunsetting products, for products where, you know, you're really really just looking to offload a, a significant amount in a short period of time. Other variable that's important here is kind of previewing and seeding the deal to different Facebook deal groups. Now you can just go ahead and, and Google, Google groups, kind of go through the results and reach out to the admins. Or like I did with this deal, I, I've had a couple deal groups that I've worked with in the past that I just messaged the deal to the admins so that they had a 24 hour notice and then could post it. <coughs> Excuse me. On the job. Other way to kind of find groups, find Amazon associates and influencers is AMZ Rolodex uh, from my friend, Brad Burkhoff. Uh, this is a great tool, 5,000 Amazon influencer owners. And if you wanna kind of find influencers that are fit for purpose for your brand or your product, this is a great resource. I think the charge is like 30 bucks a month, 40 bucks a month for access to the Rolodex. Uh, so it's kind of a shortcut to finding influencers that you can work with, not only for social media promo codes, but for uh, really anything where you want to bring in kind of that influencer bump. I'll pause there for a second. Uh, Ryan, I lost track of the chat. Any questions that have come up or are we okay? We're okay for now. I do have one question, John. Um, have you ever experienced yeah. a you know, deal deal group or a Facebook group that like charges a fee to run the deal or to promote your deal, or is it generally a uh, free exchange? Free exchanges. Um, okay. I I have seen admins and experienced admins ask for kind of a a larger cut than their associate referral fee. Um, depending on the product, I will entertain that. For for the most part, I just move on. Uh, All right. I'm giving, I'm giving away 50% uh, of the product price already. These associates aren't getting, you know, more than a, a few single digit percentage points on the sales. Uh, uh, but what they, I kind of remind them of is this is a broader relationship. I represent a lot of brands. Uh, I, I might inflate the truth a little bit in some regards. Um, but nevertheless, I make sure that I'm consistently seeding them with deals because ultimately that's what moves uh, the needle for them as associates collecting commissions. They, they just need the volume at some level, um, whether it's a, a low ASP product after the promo price or a high ASP, uh, the volume is something that they remember. Yeah, so forming those relationships, if this is something you wanna do, sounds like it's really important. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in the beginning, what I did was I, I literally uh, searched Facebook deal groups uh, and I searched for Facebook deal groups plus relevant keywords for my products and reached out to the admins. Um, it's a great task for a VA. Uh, in fact, now that's kind of one of the things that my VA focuses on. Um, but if you're just getting started out, Google is your friend. AMZ Rolodex is your friend. Great way to identify uh, where you'll get the most mileage. Awesome. And by the way, guys, you can utilize the chat or the Q&A to ask questions to John or myself throughout the presentation. So if you have questions, throw them in. Right. I promise I'd keep this in 30 minutes. We got about eight minutes. I think I can do it. Uh, <laughs> Let's do it. Um, all right. We're moving from easy to hard. Uh, this one's hard only insofar as it's a little analytical and it requires, I'd say, intermediate fluency in uh, PPC campaign setup and PPC. Uh, I know we talked about not leaning into Amazon PPC, Amazon paid traffic as a, uh, a pretext for this conversation, but hear me out. Mapping your customer journey. Now, what I'm showing here is a great tool from Scott uh, called Smart Scout. And among the features that it offers is kind of customer journey mapping. Uh, around an ASIN or a keyword. Uh, so what I've tried to demonstrate on this slide is, let's say hypothetically, I'm the brand Frida Baby. A lot of my portfolio is in the baby category, so it's, it's kind of a, a natural thing for me to think about here. 
But this great tool within Smart Scout or this feature within Smart Scout will show you for a given ASIN or for a given keyword, what are the traffic sources? Where are our customers starting their buying journey and then landing on your product? Or alternatively, they start at your product, where do they go next? The reason that's important is I think a lot of Amazon PPC product targeting focuses on similar products, substitutable products. And those are the ones where, frankly, CPCs are going to be on par with, with kind of your product. So the, the hack here is really about understanding the journey such that you can get in front of customers for cheaper than you otherwise would. So taking the example of this uh, free to baby, <laughs> any, any of the listeners out there have kids, uh, this is a little device that you, you stick up your baby's bum to relieve gas. Um, <laughs> so fun, fun little parenting toy, uh, parenting product. Uh, but what you can see, or maybe you can't see, but if you squint, uh, are buying after shopping for uh, this little product here. You can see my mouse. It's a magic sleep suit. So it's what babies are, are sleeping in after they're kind of moving from a swaddle to, to something a little more grown up. Uh, customers are are shopping other free baby products. And they get to... Uh, the Windy, the gas reliever, they're then going over to the Frida Baby Snot Sucker. Uh, so you can kind of understand the ecosystem of products around it and what, what, what starts the journey, what ends the journey. And what I would do is at these nodes, whether they come before my product or after, I would understand cost per click across relevant keywords that are, I guess, relevant to my product and and the ensuing or the preceding product and look for arbitrage opportunity. So that's essentially what this hack is about. It's understanding the customer journey such that you can kind of arbitrage lower cost per clicks uh, based on related products that you know empirically are, are part of the customer purchase journey. So this is a little complicated. That's why I've, I've labeled it a, a hard traffic hack because uh, you know, you not only need to map this out, you then need to set up campaigns that, that target these products. And you're probably going to have to experiment with different ad types and different placements uh, because, because you know, there will be a significant amount of customers that are not following this journey. They're just searching for a single one-off product and you don't want to waste to spend on those. All right, charging ahead to the final hack, the harder traffic hack. Uh, and this is a cool one, but... It's harder. It takes some time. It takes some sophistication. The hack is you're buying a media asset. And I, I'll share on the next slide a really cool example of when I did this earlier this year. Uh, but let's say hypothetically you have a, a brand in the, the pet space. You have a dog product brand. Uh, now, you could spend $50 a day in PPC, $100 a day in PPC, $200 a day in PPC. Or you could go to a site like Social Tradia, and there are others. FameSwap is one of them. Media Acquire is another. And you could buy a Instagram page related to dogs with 5,000 followers for 140 bucks, right? And you can use this page in different ways. Uh, I think that the primary way and kind of related to this, this overall presentation is drive traffic from that Instagram store to your store. Um, you know, feature to the Instagram audience your upcoming deals or just generally engage them in such a way that you're, you're continually reminding them of your Amazon storefront, your Amazon brand. That's one way. Other way is you have 5,000 people for 140 bucks. Get in front of them regularly with any dog-related product. And this is where becoming an Amazon associate and searching for deals, maybe social media promo codes from brands that are dog related, you put those in front of your followers and you collect a commission. So there's a lot of ways to you know, take a $140 investment and turn it into traffic to your Amazon brand or just generally monetize an asset like this. Uh, and you'll see a wide range of prices on these, but it, it's shocking 
kind of the following that you can buy for relatively small amounts of money, money that you would otherwise spend on PPC in a week or maybe a month, right? This is a, a close to 100K account of puppy posts for $1,200, right? And you can do kind of a, you know, a cost per mil advertiser calculation uh, and, and work out what that cost will be. But over time, that's going to be a lot cheaper than any um, like vCPM metrics for, for PPC, uh, for sponsor display, or for DSP. So how do I know this work? This will work uh, because I did it. Um, about six months ago, I bought a baby-related Instagram account. Uh, relatively small following, 35K. I mean, that's a large following compared to my personal Instagram, which has like 200 followers. <laughs> um, but uh, I bought a following of 35K for 1,200 bucks. Now, since purchase, uh, based on kind of the posts that I put out there, which by the way, I, I have my VA handle because she is much better at social media than me. Um, but I just looked at this last week. Impressions since purchase, 328. If you do a CPM, that cost mill calculation, it's $3.65 per thousand impressions on Instagram. Now, those aren't all high intent, high purchase intent impressions, right? That's, that's not what Instagram is. But still, you kind of look on a, a somewhat apples to apples face with DSP. Uh, uh, DSP will typically run you, I think, around $5 uh, per thousand impressions. It can go higher, maybe a little lower depending on the sites that you're targeting. But I think DSP is similar outside of the, the retargeting that it's upper funnel, it's necessarily high purchase and customers that you're putting in products in front of. So it's, it's a rough apples to apples comparison. So that's a, that's a great, great, great CPM. It's only going to get better over time, right? Because this is kind of six months of owning the asset, 320K, 28K impressions. That impression can go down. My, my cost on this is still 1200 bucks. Uh, so I'm spreading that cost over increasing impressions over time. Now, I think where the, the more interesting data points are are in these last three bullets. Impressions on Instagram in the past 30 days, a little bit because it's Q4. We're leaning into kind of holiday uh, content, but 82,000. Not bad. Uh, more importantly, affiliate re revenue and attributed sales. I talked about this at the beginning. You can monetize these media assets, not just through driving traffic to your Amazon stores, but also through promoting products that are related to uh, the, the account type, the context, the interest type. Uh, so I have a related account. I'm not just pushing my baby brands. I'm pushing other baby brands. Uh, and for the past 30 days, which again, inflated due to Q4 and a lot of shopping, but $537 in Amazon associate revenue. Uh, the other side of that coin is I am driving sales through Amazon attribution to my Amazon baby brands, I'm not only collecting the brand referral bonus, but I'm, I'm earning sales. And over the past 30 days, about $1,700 in sales. So I've already made my money back on purchasing this asset. Uh, and I will have it to drive traffic in 2024 and, and probably beyond, uh, unless I decide to turn around and, and flip it to someone else. It can be very effective, but it's hard. You, you have to find the right media asset. And I always... Uh, counsel people to search for a common interest that's that's tightly related to your brand. Or uh, I, I counsel them to search for something where the audience is going to expect deals and expect kind of commercial related posts. Um, for example, if you have an opportunity to buy a Facebook deal group, it might not be, it might be a general group, but it, it could still be a valuable asset for you depending on the price. Um, the other reason this is hard though is you might have to search for a while. Uh, I I had this idea literally this time last year and it took me about what seven months to kind of find the right asset and then work through the sale process uh, with the seller. So it's, it's simple, but not easy as I like to say. Um, and I think we're about at time. So I'll just, I'll throw this up here. Uh, I don't know if I saw any questions come through, but anything Ryan that I might've missed here that you want to double click on before we break.
I, I did have one just question about your personal experience with the media asset. Did you combine when you were sending traffic back to your Amazon listing? Did you also combine that tactic with the social media promo codes or were you just simply sending traffic with no discount from your Instagram account back to Amazon? I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the social media promo code example that I provide, I did Uh, I, I absolutely mix and match all of these tactics because um, particularly for a product that I'm, I'm, I'm sunsetting that I want to get out of, I've, I want to get out of it as soon as possible. I don't want to accumulate fees, especially in Q4. I don't want to get hit with aged inventory surcharges. Uh, so social media promo code through my, my own asset, um, I, I have done that. It, truth is, it didn't produce as cool of a spike as uh, that other product. So I use that as an example. Um, I, I think social media promo codes do work best in Facebook deal groups. Uh, but yeah, the answer, the short answer is yes. I, I did combine those. I have combined those uh, for my baby brands. That's awesome. I mean, it's a great result. I think that's a fascinating case study about, you know, there, there might be this perception that buying an account with a lot of followers could be very expensive. And I think you've just shown us how, not only is it not expensive, but you can make that money back pretty quickly if you're doing things correctly, which is awesome. Yeah, um, it, it's wild. Um, again, uh, Fame Swap, Media Acquire, those are, are two other good uh, marketplaces, if you will, for assets. And it's not just Instagram accounts. There's Facebook groups, there's newsletters, there's content blogs. You know, these are media assets. Uh, so it's really cool. Great. And we have one question for you, John. Um, this is from... Uh, the hard tactic, which would be building that customer map. Um, they're wondering if you have any perspective on how conversion rates might compare with this compared to um, CPCs. You know, CPCs could be lower, but does the CVR also drop quite a bit when you're That's targeting? That's an awesome question. Yeah. Uh, that whoever asked that is, is super smart um, and I love it. Yeah, conversion rate tends to be lower. It, it's there's kind of a blended set of customers that are seeing these ads. They're the ones that are, are looking for a simple one node, one product shopper journey. And, and they don't care what they see uh, on that page because they're not looking to, to build a fast They will have very low conversion rates. But then there are the customers that are kind of represented in this mapping uh, that will have a higher conversion rate. Maybe not higher than normal, but on par with your existing one. Uh, so the way you make the tech work is really through bid discipline. Uh, keeping that CPC as low as possible. Not not only kind of estimating from the, the web of products where you're going to have low PCs, but bid discipline so that you're even coming in lower. Because the conversion rate is, uh, my experience, worse than targeting similar products. Uh, that's a great question. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. All right. Well, if there's no other questions from the audience, then I think we'll go ahead and, and conclude this session. Um, thank you so much, John, for sharing your wisdom with us. If anybody has follow-ups for John, you can see his contact info here. Go follow him on LinkedIn and Twitter, X, I should say. Um, and when, yeah. you, <laughs> when you leave the webinar today, you'll be asked to complete a short survey. Please fill that out and be honest. It helps us produce more content like this for you guys. So. Thank you for attending and thank you, John. We appreciate it. Thanks, Ryan.